am I actually allowed to do this? I, I mean, aren't I a little biased? Am I really going to make the argument that we're not needed? There's a little thing called, oh, I don't know, job security. Ugh, fine. Let's talk about film critics, specifically the backlash against them. All you motherfuckers are going to pay. You are the ones who are the ball lickers. We're going to fuck your mothers while you watch and cry like little whiny bitches. Yeah, recently there's been a bit of a backlash against film critics. Mostly from people who are angry that a movie they loved was critically panned or that a movie they hated was critically praised. The website, Rotten Tomatoes, is either a seal of approval or a broken system and people seem to be pretty divided on which one it is. So the ultimate question is, in a day and age where the internet has given everybody an opinion, are film critics really needed? Well first, let's talk about Rotten Tomatoes, since it's kind of the source of this debate. For those who don't know, Rotten Tomatoes is a website that gathers all kinds of movie reviews from various film critics all across the internet and then rates the film based on its number of positive reviews versus its number of negative reviews. If more people review the film negatively, the film is deemed rotten, and if more people review the film positively, it's deemed fresh. Seems like a fair rating system. So what's the problem? Well, for starters, these ratings aren't always accurate. A film with only 8 movie reviews has a better chance of getting a higher percentage than a film that has 80 movie reviews. Also, the pass or fail rating system isn't exactly a good way to judge a film. Batman vs Superman had a ton of reviews that weren't positive, but they weren't negative either. But because Rotten Tomatoes judges a meh rating as a negative, suddenly that rating system isn't accurate. Now none of this is the fault of a film critic, but people sure seem to think that. So much so that some people actually tried to shut the website down because they thought a film was being treated unfairly. Now granted, that petition was a joke, but some people actually took it seriously. There's actually kind of a, a bit of a hypocrisy when it comes to how people use film critics in support of their arguments. We've all been guilty of it. When we agree with a film critic's opinion, it's great. But when we disagree, suddenly that critic is an idiot. And how dare he or she voice their opinion on the internet? Because the internet has given everyone an opinion, why should we bother with the opinion of one film critic? Well, I can think of a few reasons actually. The first is that many film critics are experts when it comes to knowing about film. Heck, I actually studied and went to college for this shit. So, we have informed opinions that allow us to see things that perhaps the general movie-going audience wouldn't see. And we like to share what we see with all of you. Why is the color red used so much in The Sixth Sense? Why are so many horror movie monsters shot at low angles? Someone who is trained or at least knowledgeable in the art form would have a much more informed opinion about a film than any average Joe. The second well, actually, I think the ending of Ratatouille said it best. Defending the new. People can be cruel and often unforgiving to change. Heck, this is the species that flips its shit every time Facebook changes its layout. Critics can often defend a film that otherwise couldn't defend itself. Most recently, the Peach Dragon remake. It's a great film that would have failed miserably at the box office if it wasn't for positive word of mouth. It still didn't do great numbers because of a horrible opening night, but it managed to make its budget back with a little extra. The third is that sometimes we can like or dislike something and not be able to properly express why. Film critics can. We can break down a film and express its pros and cons, and you can look at those pros and cons and use them to form your own opinion. That's what's so great about film. One critic might look at 2001 A Space Odyssey and see a masterpiece of cinema and be able to explain why. Another might see a boring, pretentious piece of crap and list a bunch of points explaining why. Neither are more wrong and neither are more right. It all depends on what argument makes the most sense to you. So are film critics needed? Would the world burn down without them? Yes, absolutely. Without critics, it would be anarchy, chaos, cats and dogs, living together, mass hysteria. Oh, of course not, but the same could be said about any entertainer. That's what critics are. We entertain you with our opinions. We can open your eyes to new ways of looking at film. Maybe a film you liked wasn't as flawless as you thought. Perhaps a film you hated wasn't as bad as it was. That's why film critics are needed to open your eyes to a new point of view. So, 
Where am I going with this? Find critics with opinions that you usually agree with. But also keep your mind open. Don't be so closed-minded. It's okay to look at a film differently than how you have been. The problem isn't that film critics are a dying breed. We're not. If anything, there's more of us out there than ever. The problem is closed-minded people who only want to see what they see and nothing else. If you like Batman vs. Superman, that's fine. If you hated 2001 A Space Odyssey, more power to you. If a film critic doesn't agree with you, go find one that does. There's bound to be at least one. But as with any art form, you're not going to agree with everybody on everything. So go out. Listen to other people's thoughts on a movie. Decide what you agree and disagree with. Stop and think about what some of these critics are saying. Who knows? Maybe you'll see something special in a film you never would have thought could have had it.